So after a devastating loss to Tulane in the Cotton Bowl, today we need to talk about USC, and we need to ask the question, what comes next for Lincoln Riley and the Trojans? On a year where, comparatively speaking, if we look at this season for USC compared to what they experienced just a year ago where they were 4-8, and eight, this season was an absolute success. So why does this loss feel like it took the wind out the sails of USC fans? This is something we have got to discuss. But before we can, as always, y'all know the drill. I've got to hear from you. Hop down to the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe Lincoln Riley needs to make some changes? And let me know what you're thinking. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like and comment down below. Those interactions are massive. And we're on a push to 20,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you a part of this unbelievable community. But having said all that, let's jump right into this. And before we can really fully turn our attention to the game we just saw yesterday, we do need to give credit where it's due. Because before the season started, I gave my outlook for USC and I thought that they would be an improved team. Coming from 4-8, and eight, I thought with Lincoln Riley, with Caleb Williams, with the talent they pulled from the transfer portal, there was no way they wouldn't be an improved team. And when we got to the question of could they contend for the college football playoffs, my answer was no. I thought that was too big of a jump too soon. I thought the Pac-12 would have some strong teams. And I was wrong in that aspect because USC was in a position to contend for a college football playoff spot. Now, they didn't make it, but personally, I didn't know they'd be there that quickly. And so I can absolutely understand where USC fans are very excited for the future and deservedly so. But we need to talk about this game because there's a common theme that's kind of rose its ugly head with Lincoln Riley. And unfortunately for a USC fan, you're the latest team it happened to. Oklahoma fans were all too familiar with it. And that's the lack of defense. Lincoln Riley is without question one of the most brilliant offensive minds in football. But the problem is, is there's been a complete disregard for the defensive side of the ball. And in the game of football, it's not one-sided. Football, you have got to be balanced. You can win your conference if you're just a strong offensive team. There's no doubt about it. But one thing we haven't been able to see just yet is a team disregard the defensive side of the football, win college football playoff games, and win national championships. You have got to be able to play defense at some level. I understand the irony of me saying that, considering the college football games we just got and how high scoring they were. But if we look at the TCU-Michigan game, for instance, TCU had some pick sixes that were massive in that game. And furthermore, even though Michigan had some points and they were able to score, TCU's 3-3-5 defense was really able to get that power rush attack from Michigan off of its spot, allowing TCU to ultimately win the game. So even though a lot of points were scored, good defense was played. It just looks a little bit different because of the current state of college football. I don't think anybody out there is asking Lincoln Riley to all of a sudden turn his attention to defense so much that they are shutting teams out, although I'm sure USC fans would be completely satisfied with that. I don't think there's anybody in college football that's contending that. But I also think everybody in college football is contending the same thing. You cannot have no defense and expect to win playoff games, expect to win national championships. And unfortunately for Lincoln Riley, this is not the first big bowl loss we've seen. Not the first devastating loss we've seen where we can really point to an absolute lack of defense. Because one thing Lincoln Riley has never had trouble getting is transcendent talent. When we look at the run of quarterbacks Lincoln Riley has had, if I gave a lot of other teams those quarterbacks, they might have some different season expectations. They have been that good. When we're talking about Baker Mayfield, when we're talking about Kyler Murray, when we're talking about Caleb Williams, even Spencer Rattler was so coveted coming out of high school. Jalen Hurts did great things at Alabama and continued to do great things at Oklahoma. But the quality of player Lincoln Riley has had has always been very impressive on the offensive side of the ball. But if your star quarterback, your guy, Caleb Williams, throws for 462 yards, five touchdowns, and you still lose a game, that's problematic. What more do you want your generational talent quarterback to do? Because at that point, he's pretty much well done at all. He can't stand in the pocket because the USC offensive line isn't getting him any time, but he's a mobile guy and able to navigate that very successfully, might I add, and that's one of the things that makes Caleb Williams so special. But you cannot rely on Caleb Williams to solely win you games. And if that's your expectation, you might be able to get out the pack. You're going to have a hard time if you get to the college football playoffs. You're going to have a hard time in these bowl games when you're playing upper echelon teams that are far more complete, that aren't as interested in attributing all areas to one side of the football. They're going to be playing defense. 
And this is something we saw. If you look at the offensive stats for Tulane, some of it is just quite frankly incredible. For instance, if we look at Michael Pratt, he went 8 of 17 for 234 yards. If you average that out, he averaged 29 and a half yards per reception. That's not a winning recipe defensively. If we look at Tulane's rushing attack, Tajay Spears went for over 200 yards on less than 20 attempts. Michael Pratt had almost 100 yards on less than 20 attempts. You get the theme I'm making. You can be the greatest offensive team in the nation, but if you are unwilling to play defense, that's going to be your downfall. And that's been Lincoln Riley's downfall time and time again. And it brings me back to a quote about doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the quote. You've all heard it, but it absolutely applies here. Make no mistake about it. Lincoln Riley is a phenomenal coach. He is a brilliant offensive mind, and the sky truly is the limit for him. But there has been a theme that is impossible to ignore at this point. Truly impossible to ignore at this point. The lack of defense is notable. And what's more, this isn't the first big game, whether it be bowl or playoff, that Lincoln Riley has lost due to a lack of defense, but also, it's not the first time he's had a lead of 14 points be completely taken away because his defense can't stop a runny nose. This is a theme we have seen time and time again with Lincoln Riley coach teams, and it's something that if you're a USC fan, you have to be excited that you're getting this offensive talent, but at some level, you cannot ignore what history has shown us because history repeats itself. And history creates patterns for a reason. Patterns don't just emerge. There are reasons for patterns. And unfortunately, we're seeing a pattern emerge right now that has got to change if you're Lincoln Riley and you want to get over the hump. Because allowing a quarterback to throw for 17 times, complete eight of them, and average 29 yards and a half completion, that's a losing recipe. Allowing a running back to go for over 200 yards on less than 20 attempts, that's a losing recipe. You're not going to be able to win big football games like that. You're going to have a hard time with teams like Utah who are so disciplined and are going to be able to play a more balanced brand of football. And for Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator, I think a lot of attention is going to turn his way here. And look, it's a conversation that I'm really interested to see what happens. Because when Alex Grinch was at Oklahoma, he was able to improve the defense, but it never got over the hump. It never met the standard Oklahoma fans wanted so desperately. And I understand there are going to be people who watch this video and say, but Ty, he's been so successful. You're not wrong. You're certainly not wrong. He's been very successful. But at the same time, if you're not able to win a national championship with Kyler Murray, if you're not able to win a national championship with Caleb Williams, with the quarterbacks Lincoln Riley has had, forget a national championship. If you're not able to win a playoff game with the caliber of quarterbacks Lincoln Riley has had, I don't know what more you want. You've had some of the best quarterback talent we've seen in recent memory, and you're not able to get over the hump. And there is a common theme that keeps raising its head. This would not be alarming if this was the first time. I would grant you, I don't think it would be too, too alarming if this was the second time. This is a pattern, and patterns don't emerge for no reason. This is a pattern that if you're Lincoln Riley, you've got to change. Can't wait to hear how he changes it. Hop down to the comments, let me know what you're thinking about this. That's it. See you.